Good evening guys, welcome back. This is your final group stage match of the day, I believe, on the GEST IDC channel. We have got two of Southeast Asia's finest, one hailing from the Philippines, Maneski Power Color, and one hailing from Thailand, which is Neolition Esports. So we're going to see what these two teams can concoct for us here in our final game, our penultimate game of today. We're going to have your playoffs tomorrow. That, tomorrow, That's what everyone is, of course, most excited about. I know I sure am, but first of all, we are going to have uh, this match, which is does i think it has some importance for this group maneski currently sitting on a 2-1 record i think the illusion esports are either two and i think they're one and two or two and one depending on their result with x game i'm not exactly sure on that result there but they have a potential chance to get on through if they win uh, i think if they lose they maybe can get through i think they get through as well depending on if they they beat x game uh, but it's it's interesting. We'll see what happens in this group. There are some things stirring the pot a bit. I believe it was uh, Skynet who's also in the group who uh, who had beaten Maneski. So depending on their other results, there's plenty of different possible combinations with Skynet, Neolution, um, as well as X Game. We'll see where that does take us. This is the match we're worrying about. We're worried. We're worried about Maneski versus Neolution Esports. We have got Maneski over on the skirt side. Over on the central side is going to be Neolution Esports. And uh, we're going to have a quick run through these two bands, picks, and drafts. It is going to be Maneski banning out the Dark Sea, Shadow Demon, Beastmaster, Neolution Esports banning out the Windrunner, Naga, Siren, and Lycanthrope. So Maneski, familiar sight, going to right away first pick the Rubik and then transition into a Chen and Dragon. Well, familiar sight in the fact that it was something that Dreams did with the first pick Rubik. This time it's Maneski and Chen DK the next two picks. So there's your Solar Mid DK and your Chen for Woots in the jungle. Looking good so far for Maneski. Very similar to what we saw last game from them. We'll see if they run a similar style again. Uh, Rubik can be that support hero. Instead of that crystal main that they had last game is always possible. Uh, over on the Neelish and Esports side, they picked up the Queen of Pain and the Prophet. So they've got a lot of ganking potential there. Some burst damage from Queen of Pain. The great teleport and pushing potential of the Prophet. The split push, the really annoying hero to deal with if he gets off. If you can shut him down from the start, if he never really gets the openings, then he's fine. But if he gets the openings, if he's it's one of those games where he's getting farmed and is, there's chances for him to go for those split pushes and get free towers, then you have some trouble. Then you're thinking, oh, God, we got to go back defend against Prophet. You TP back, two or three SDP. You don't even kill him. And, well, it's a, bit of, it's a big headache. That is that's the closest, the best way of just describing dealing with a Prophet. Um, but, anyways, we're going to see third pick coming up from the Elysian Esports. They may go for a support hero here. Or well, something like an Earthshaker could work out. Give them some strong, decent lanes. Uh, Winner has been banned out, so that's not going to be a viable option here. But, uh... Something in the support range. Nope, they're going all out. They want the carry. They want the Morphling. Morphling is going to be picked up, and that leads into the Earthshaker ban. But yeah, Morphling is uh, going to give them another hero who wants some farm. I mean, Prophet can go in the jungle with Queen of Pain at mid, Morphling at bottom. I mean, there's, there's enough lane to make this work. Uh, even if Prophet is going to go soloing that top lane in the like, like we see Orange do when Winter plays that off lane, Prophet pulling the creep with the treants. But it's still possible. But they have to pick up their two supports last. But Mineski know that they're going to ban out supports. ESAA banned out. Neolish and Esports banned out the Tiny and Crystal Maiden. And the Crystal Maiden. A combo here for the, I mean, one of the supports. I guess they're expecting Rubik to not be in a support support role, but I think that Mineski more likely to edge that way. Uh, tiny uh, sort of semi-respect band for Jay. We'll see how they want to do this. Maybe even see an Invoker come out. Jay loves his Invoker. Oh man, does he play it well. And uh, Invoker is still in the pool, so easily could be picked up. Although it would give him some lane problems. Either DK or Invoker would have to go into that top safe lane and uh, play that sort of farming role up there. I mean, you've got enough carry potential with DK and Invoker anyways. It's not like you're thinking, oh, we need a better carry. It's just not the normal lane set you can see. Normally they put uh, the Invoker at mid. This is going to be a DK at mid. Um, it's probably going to be Jay playing that, that safe lane farm. We saw him playing the Lion last game as a safe lane farm. A bit of an unusual choice, but it really worked out well for Mineski. So what do they want to go with here? Um, some of the heroes that were banned out last game are still in the pool this time around. Chaos Knight as well as Slada. Uh, possible combo heroes for that Rubik. 
but yeah, definitely love to see an Invoker here. But um, Mineski, what do they have in mind? Maybe they want to get some more heroes who can amplify their push with the Chen DK already being there. They do need a side lane solo, so you're looking at heroes like Puck. Um, even send the Puck against the Queen of Pain. Uh, that's something they did use last game game i want to say or oh, they're gonna go with something absolutely crazy they pick up the wisp io the guardian wisp has been chosen puck is actually going to go to near Lucian esports so that means we are going to be seeing a support jungle profit and uh wow this is cool this is gonna be aggressive this is gonna be absolutely a sick game i can just tell from the get-go i think the last time these two teams versed each other near Lucian esports uh, Fountain got killed by Maneski. So, uh, what are we in for this time? Um, last time it was Maneski killing the Illusions Fountain. This time around, well, the Crystal Main is not in the game. I think that's partly why Crystal Main was banned. So, just so Maneski can't kill their Fountain. But Maneski have something up their sleeves with this Wisp pick. And we're going to see something to combo with the Wisp as a last pick, I imagine. I, th I don't think it will see a Wisp solo. I mean, it's it's possible, I guess. But I think Rubik's more likely to be a farmer here. But this is some awkward laning. I mean, who do they send to that bottom lane? Who do they send as a suicide solo? Or do they run maybe a three-hero trialing down there? We want something to co continue the combo with the Wisp. I mean, you're looking at something like a Sanking. So we can have the Epicenter and then relocate him in. Some kind of combo like that. Or they're going to go, okay, Ricky it is. Why not? Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Stealth Assassin getting picked up, and he's that's the hero that Wisp can amplify up quite well. Uh, you have the Tether, which can boost his attack speed, his survivability. When you put your, oh, I think it's your called Overcharge. Um, and uh, we'll see where they want to go with this. I mean, this is going to be interesting. This is near Lucian Esports thinking, oh, where are these picks? This is not what we what we're used to seeing. But uh, Neolution Esports, I mean, they're, they're a seasoned team. They, they they will come up with something, I imagine. I mean, we have got, uh, I think it was actually Miggy playing as a stand-in. No, no Miggy. I don't see Miggy. Miggy is apparently tuning in, maybe. That's what they're, That's why they, they're spamming Miggy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, I don't actually see Miggy in this game. I think he's maybe just uh, tuning in. So big shout out to Miggy if you are watching on the live stream, but uh, for now, Neelish Esports really thinking through this last pick. I don't think it's too much to think about. It's just about which support, I mean, which support do you want? A lot have been banned out. You're looking at Tidehunter, so they really want the team fight. Okay. I guess that's why they had to think it through, because Tidehunter does give them some weak lanes. If they went for something like a VS or a Venomancer, even the Shadow Demon, they have stronger lanes. This is going to give them weak lanes, but they'll give them a stronger team fight later on in the game. But it's still quite a risky choice because of how weak their lanes are going to be and how Maneski can just sort of maneuver around the map so damn well. <laughs> oh, just trolling them. Anyways, we are going to see, introducing your two teams, over on the central side, we have got Near Lucian Esports, we've got KYT playing the Puck, we have got mid lane, the Morphling being played by Intrizo, we've got the Jungle Prophet being played by Noxum, we've got the Queen of Pain in the hands of Taji, and then finally the Titan, the main support being played by Bali. Over on the Scourge team, your Mineski. Dota squad, you've got RR playing the Wisp. We've got Chen being played by Woot. DK played by Jajero, JJR. We've got Ricky being played by Jay. And finally, on the Rubik is Oa. So, look at this. Unusual item builds, unusual laning all over the place from Maneski. Rubik going to be soloing up the bottom lane. That's going to be a tough, tough-ish lane. It looks like a Tide Queen of Pain. Uh, for the most part, he is going to maybe be, see some ganks coming in from the Prophet. Mid lane, you've got Wisp and Ricky. Wisp looking, saving 270 gold. He probably wants to get up a fairly, fairly fast bottle because he does share the regen when he's tethered. So getting a bottle on Wisp makes it, it's just such a great combo item to have up against the Morphling. And then top lane, Puck is up against the DK. DK is going to be solo up there. He's going for a soul ring, so not just straight up rushing the bottle. Uh, that's an interesting thing to note as well. He is up against the Puck, which is a decent matchup for him. He shouldn't struggle too badly in this matchup. He should be able to get some last hit, some okay farm. And oops, I do have some problem with my sound there. And so we will see Rubik uh, not really being able to get in all too close to this creep wave at the moment. 
Tide is there, waiting in the jungle. He'll come out in a second, probably pop a gush and then a couple of right clicks, and that's going to hurt this Rubik. Force him back. Maybe even see Queen of Pain looking to blink in. He's got Shadow Strike, and does he have blink? Yes, blink, Shadow Strike. This could be the death of Oa. This is not looking like a situation he can actually survive. Profit TPing in as well. I don't think Profit's even there. Probably going to cancel that. Tide, Bawley says, I want that kill, yo. Give me that kill. He, he's going to take it. As uh, apparently there uh, is some lag. Guys, if you're lagging, try refresh the stream or try a different quality. But uh, that is going to be your first by the bottom lane going into Tide's hands. Morphing at mid, already forced to pop his salve, and he is out of regen. He's going to be getting constantly harassed, and he's a long way off his bottle. Oh. We will see Ricky and Wisp hovering around, looking to just continue to be as aggressive as possible. DK at the top. Jajero, 9 CS. He is out CSing the puck, at least for the time being. The Quelling Blade will help him do that, and uh, he's going to have that soaring up, going to allow him to spam the Flame Breath when he does get that slightly higher level. As we see constant whispers, right clicking whenever possible. Oh man, this is being a very, very pesky. Rubik at bottom. Uh, he's level 2. He's managed to push this wave. We'll get, have the wave get pushed close enough to his tower that he can farm all right. Get some XP, get some gold. And uh, now the bigger creep wave does arrive. Tied heading towards mid lane. What is he up to? I guess he's thinking let's support the morphing and leave Queen of Pain in a 1v1 matchup. We can go 2v2 at mid, but I don't think Tide can do a whole lot to help here. I mean, I guess he can just sort of scare them off and just act, act as a shepherd. I mean, it works. See, there he is, just throws a gush down on the Ricky. But, uh, still think for the most part he's not going to do a whole lot. Level 2 backstab. Ricky is, uh, getting points into his passive. I think his back, backstab is, yeah, that's his passive. It's blink strike, which he probably has one point. He's probably got one blink and two in backstab and no points in cloud at the moment. That would be my guess. Oh, Ricky. Careful. Morphling getting some, morphing some stats to strength here. Tide, uh, Gash goes in, sort of poking around. Ricky actually gonna, there we go, there's that blink strike. Not gonna commit fully on to that. And, uh, we'll see Queen of Pain at bottom lane. Trading hits a bit, they're both level 4 now. Not a massive XP lead for the Queen of Pain despite having that kill because he was sharing it to begin with. Top lane we see Puck 13 and 2, 17 1 on the DK who does have his soaring. Problem is now whenever he uses that soaring he's inflicting damage on himself and uh, he, he doesn't have a huge amount of regen. He's got, like, he's got quite a few tangos in fact and he's going to have, he's got just one in the dragon blood so he's gone for level 1 stun. Often you'll see 2 in flame and 2 in two in that aura, the dragon blood because you're not really going to be getting solo kills too much. But against the Puck there is a potential to use that stun to, greater, to, to some effect. So. Uh, especially once you get level 6, you want to have that stun at level 6 when you get the rain stun and maybe look for a kill then. So, I can understand getting that early point in stun, even uh, in this matchup. Often if you're mid and you're not going to see any ganks coming in, then you can maybe... And, and you know you're not going to be able to kill when you hit level 6, then you can maybe say, Okay, let's not get stun, let's get the extra point in region, because I'm being pressured a lot. But, Queen of Pain finds a haste rune, does bottle it up, and will be heading back towards the bottom lane, and this is... A dangerous situation for Rubik. He does get the toss. Oh, oh, he's got no tangos. He's going to go down here. Probably just wants to throw off that nuke if possible. He's out of mana though. He's going to go down. Queen of Pain. Tashi oh, picks up the kill. 2 0. Near Lucian Esports. Off to a good start. Off to a lead at least. There we go. Turn up my air conditioner a bit. Getting a bit, getting a bit warm in here. Can't seem to moderate this temperature very well. It's either too cold, too warm. And uh, now Morphling, mid lane, really being put under pressure. He's got more strength and agility. He's morphed quite a bit of stats, and the problem is that makes it even harder to last hit. Um, it's already quite hard as it is with your, whatever your base stats are. But uh, he's got this Wraith Band. That'll give him some bonus damage. He seems to be doing all right, and most importantly, he's got this bottle. He's now actually going to start throwing, sending that back and forth. Is there a double courier? I think it's just the one courier here for the uh, Sentinel team. Yeah, it looks like there is just the one career, but they've got a couple of heroes with bottles. But Queen of Pain, getting a couple of runes here there, and oh, look at this. Queen of Pain actually looking for an opportunity to Sonic Wave. The Scream doesn't actually land on them. And oh, it does pop this out, starts healing himself back up. Ricky goes in onto the Morphling. Morphling as a wave, as far as I can tell. He's got plenty of money. He's going to get that kill there. Wisp level 4. The whoop, though. No, these Wisp, Wisp bombs do expire. And then Tide, Anchor Smash, gets the kill. 4 0 near Lucian Esports. Off to it. Decent start here to say the least. 
and Puck at top. What is going on at top, guys? I just as, as I say that, I poke my head at the top, and DK seems to have dived on the Puck. Puck with a Dream Fill, getting the kill, surviving on 20 HP, so... Aggression all over, and Neolution Esports coming out on top, getting kills in all three lanes. Queen of Pain with a couple at bottom, there's the one at mid, and the one at top, and all in all, a really good start for Neolution. 5-0. And now we're going to see. I mean, has, how's this Ricky pick going to work? He's picked up a couple of Wraith Ban. And it uh, looks like he just wants to go all out with these early game items. Queen of Pain with a regen rune. Uh, has a magic one recipe and will be looking to complete that. Now they've gone in. He does tether his teammate here, but Rubik's still in a lot of trouble. Sonic Wave getting popped and uh, it will... Actually, war one for one trade. They do get the Queen of Pain. Proper trying to TP himself out. Wiz does not have enough damage for that, unfortunately. Oh, he tried to tether a creep and get the stun. That was smart, but it was just a bit too slow. Meanwhile, mid lane Morphling waving out, getting away from Ricky. This Ricky hurts with these two Wraith Bands. These Wraith Bands this early on in the game. Poor man's shield as well. Look at this. Plus 26 damage, plus 20 agility. He hits fast and hard. He's got some decent plus armor. It's a really nice, strong early game build. And it's built towards controlling the Morphling at mid lane, I feel, and just really making sure they don't fall too far behind. Prophet, though, in the jungle, has reached level 6. You can see that ultimate flying out immediately. And it uh, looks like it's used to actually get the kill. They take out Jay. That's uh, the Ricky at mid, and he goes down with the help of the Sentry Ward, in fact, as well. And we're going to see if Down TK is doing a top. He does have that one there. 0 1, 44 creep kills, 25 creeps on the puck. So DK winning this top lane fairly convincingly, at least CS wise, but uh, he is taking a bit of damage here. Chen now joining up, and we'll see if they can get this kill here. Puck going to be forced back. He's got the phase boost, the DK. Very, very aggressive. Last hit to Taos. Zero. In good form at the moment. So far, so good. And uh, they may even continue the pressure to keep on pushing this top lane. Nope, they decide to back things off. Maybe pick up a ring, pick up something, start building towards this next item. Help. No, of course, quarter south. He's going to go for the Lothar's Edge. So I'm heading in there. Is he actually buying Ring of Help? We're going to see a Vanguard for once, and of course he's going to stick to the build, the Lothar's Edge. Morphling gets pulled back towards the tower, waves out, but it doesn't actually really hit much, too much with that. And uh, the good news is there is a ward on the high ground for Neelush and Esports. Very low chance of being ganked here, although Wisp level 6. Ooh, ooh. That is going to be troublesome for whoever does get on the receiving end of a relocate gank. Especially if a Ricky. You just can be anywhere on the map at any time, and it's just so damn pesky. Oh, Tide. Found by some Chen Creeps. The clap is there. That looks like the end of Tide. Oh, just. Some illusions came in. And uh, to make sure of it. And here comes DK from behind. Is he going to find anything? Puck drops the Dream Call. He's going to get stunned, though. And that is not where he wants to be. Waveform from Rubik. That is just the spell Rubik wanted to have. But he waved in too close. Took some tower damage. Ended up going down. Whisk going to come in. Breaks the trees. And he's looking for the Prophet. Prophet gets stunned once, either another stun. Deke has enough mana, there we go. And the Wiz starting to hit onto the Prophet. He's trying to TP out. Is there enough damage? Yes, there is. There's a Flame Breath with the Soul Ring. Mineski have turned this around. They started, them, they started off down. Six kills to nothing, but now four kills to two. The recent trade in the last couple of minutes. And you're going to have to see how Ricky is doing at bottom lane. He's looking to pick off this Queen of Pain, maybe. Queen of Pain with a Courier, so potentially aiming to get some bottle Courier action happening, but... Um, for the most part, uh oh, this is uh, not looking good for Queen of Pain, it's a Chainstun's going to be enough, oh, just gets out of the cloud as well as those stun locks, and that uh, will make his way back to base to heal up, Queen of Pain dodges a bullet. Oh, the stun on Morphing, he needs to start Morphing now, he's Morphing the Strength Telekinesis, this is Let's just say, nowhere near having enough damage to kill him. He's got 1,400 HP for one thing. And uh, he can always morph more, he can always wave out as well. There just wasn't going to be enough burst damage. Unless he's sitting on, like, all Agi and you can burst him down before he gets a chance to uh, stack convert any. But, uh, no potential for a kill there. And there we go. Flying Crow on Queen of Pain. We're going to see some Bottle Crow happening from the Queen of Pain. Ten minutes in, though. This is a bit later. Oh! Queen of Pain, he caught just the end of it. It looked like a blink scream and then just throws an ulti a bit later. Luckily, just skimming Jay. Manages to land, gets the kill. Big play there. Taji having a decent game so far on that Queen of Pain.
Chen rotating bottom though. We're gonna see a bit of a swing, bit of an attempt to push perhaps. And uh, I think Queen of Pain needs to be a bit wary of this. We're gonna see a TP coming in in just a second. And this Queen of Pain, oh, oh. Oh no, no Ricky TP, there we go, Ricky TPing now, but it's a bit late! Oh, he goes to the creep, Centaur stun, great micro from Woot! Oh, that was a bit of beauty, that was something to be seen. Really nice micro from Woot, sent his creeps in from behind while they went in from the front, and he just, he basically blinked right into the creeps. The additional stun provided from the tether set everything up, and that was lovely, that was a sight to see. Elsewhere we do see Owa on the Rubik, he was sampling that side lane solo, he is uh, a bit behind in farm, a bit behind in XP, he's eight at the moment, he can of course steal a spell. As for what spell, well that's a whole nother matter. Morphling at top, he's uh, juking out a bit with the DK, DK actually popping the Sora, getting himself lowered just so he has enough mana for that stun, and uh, Morphling gonna continue the Bottle Crow. I mean, he just really wants to have whatever he can, stat-wise and HP-wise, continually healing himself up. He's actually gone for the two Wraith Band build as well. Very aura game, or, or, what? very early game oriented play from both teams, as it is. Ricky and Wisp. Going up, there's your Arcane Boots. Very strong tool to have as a Wisp. You can give someone double Arcane when they're tethered, and they're going to run right into this profit maybe. Oh no. That is going to be the end of this profit. The smoke goes down. He's trying to TP. I don't think it's going to be enough as uh, we will see Wiz taking a lot of damage. He's trying to relocate out. He does manage to do so. And elsewhere we do see it's actually top lane. Wiz picks up a kill on Intriso. I'm not sure how that one managed to happen as uh, they are going to see Rubik coming in just to defend this relocate because he's about to come back in. SA Ricky is there, TP from the high ground, and it looks like Puckball managed to get away, but they're going to swing mid, they're going to go looking for this Queen of Pain. The Wisp play so far has been pretty good, I have to say. Nice control, nice move around the map, and very, very aggressive, putting Neolution on the back, back foot despite early game not being all that, not being so strong at the early levels. That's the thing, Wisp needs some levels, needs some farm. Top lane, lots of TPs going, it looks like Maneski could be found themselves in a bit of trouble. He does have a calling blade, he gets out, but that's not going to help him enough. Puck with the orb into a waning rip. Enough damage to take out the DK at top lane. DK overextending. He was close to his Lothars, in fact, I think he'd finished it. Yes, he had, he'd finished his Lothars Edge. He must have been feeling pretty cocky knowing, oh, I've got a Lothars Edge. Oh, no, it's flying out to me. Of course, he probably knew it was flying out to me, but it's just a psychological thing, thinking, okay, I've got my Lothars Edge coming, let's look at this, I can just be so aggressive, so cocky up in the lane, and then my Lothar's Edge will, I mean, it's sort of just preparing that mentality where you can just be aggressive and then Lothar's can save you, but it wasn't actually there yet, as uh, we will see. T1 Towers potentially being traded here, the top one definitely going to go down, Near Lucian's knocks him, picks that one up, that's going to the Prophet, who's currently building a mech for his team, looks like he probably has finished it as he's just spent been a good chunk of his gold. Yep, there we go. We're going to have the mech being bought. Ricky at bottom is trying to do some similar damage to the T1 tower, but they just do not have the push. Probably need the Chen there with them, as uh, Chen is actually, speaking of, speaking of the devil, he's heading, heading down there, on his way. And uh, we're going to see whether how, how much damage they can inflict upon this bottom lane. Holy crap, what just happened there? Intriza with a double kill. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm way too tired for my own good right now. Completely missing kills left, right, and center. As uh, Chen will come into the mid lane, TP going. Is it going to stop? They've got a Ravage up. He does. Well, does, I mean, maybe he does want to use it. He goes. He's going to use it. Can Rubik steal it? This is your chance. So the Anchor Smash gets used immediately. Really good play from Tide. Making sure if, if, if that Ravage had been stolen, that would have been disastrous. Rubik not getting his hands on the holy grail of spells. Not going to work from the Chen creeps. Going to block off the escape, and that's going to be the end of Tai. He drops down another gush. Rubik in a bit of trouble here. Getting very, very low. He goes down. Queen of Pain goes in. Queen of Pain's going to clean up. Three more kills going the way of Neolution Esports. They pick up both those two heroes who are diving in at bottom. Prophet wants to pick up that mech, that heal will be very, very useful for his team. 
But we're gonna see him going back soon. And contribute a lot to those dives, maybe even save those TV series who are actually going down and uh, make it so it gets turned around in a more even way. Lothar's officially bought on DK. It's now on his hero. 1400 gold as well, so that's looking like an Ogre Club into a BKB, I'd say. A player's forces are under attack. And uh, Prophet still farming away. Get your mech, man. Get your mech. Get your mech. Wisp. What is he doing with the DK? He wants this puck. Puck trying to orb his way out. Phase shift. Orb the poison. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be enough. It is. The flame breath is there, but Queen of Pain picks up two. Taji punishing the whiffs. Wisp DK for being overly aggressive. Overextending. Overzealous. Over the top. Enough overs as it is. But, uh, and we are, yeah, we are, we are over with that. <laughs> And uh, we're going to see Ricky has picked up his boots of elven skin, which means, I mean, I guess Yasha is the, the, the logical thing to buy with that. It's not going to be, I mean, that's not Diffusal Blade. You want Blades of Alacra in the Robe of the Magi, so interesting little pick up there. We'll see him maybe going Yasha and then the Diffusal Blade, but uh, the, the, the boots on their own, I'm not sure where we're going other than Yasha. It's the most uh, logical thing for him to get with that. Queen of Pain finds Chen. Chen in all kinds of trouble. He maybe has a heal. Considered using He does, in fact, end up using it. Wisp keeping him alive a bit longer, but there we go. Queen of Pain blinks in, picks up the Chen, and this could be bad for Wisp as well. I'm not sure if he uh, wanted to really do that one, but no, they decide not to go on him. With the Queen of Pain, though, does come back, does find the Rubik. Rubik should go down. He may be going to get denied. Nope, there's a scream. And uh, we do see the first stun. And is there going to be enough damage for Queen of Pain to go down? Yes, there is. Jujero picks up the kill. There's your Ogre Club. There's getting closer and closer to your BKB. Decent farm on him. And there's going to be a lot relying on him. Ricky so far has been an ineffective pick. as 1 and 5. Jay not having the best of games. And uh, it looks like Wisp, they, they killed them all, okay, okay, they killed them all, why not, why not, why not, why the hell not guys, just keep killing heroes when I'm not watching, KYT picks up the kill, Ricky is just struggling, he's 1 and 6, he is 1 and 6 as we do see Puck having a very decent time so far, he's had a nice impact on this game, it's coming down last to the DK, DK who is 3 3 3, 110 creep kills, Ricky with 70 creeps, 70 on Rubik as well, but look at this, 1 and 6, 0 and 6, both those two heroes are struggling. Over on the Sentinel side, what are we looking at there, Prophet level 12, Queen of Pain level 14, look at these levels, 14, 12, 13, DK is the only one with a high level on the Scourge team. And uh, looking at the farm, we're seeing 88 on Morphling, 76 on Queen of Pain, and then only 47 on Puck. So Scourge team, they're leading the farm, and uh, they're slightly behind on kills, but they're leading farm and tower, so they are still ahead. They do still have the slightly better position. We are going to see Morphling picking up the Ethereal Blade, though. He's going to have his shotgun, and that's going to make things get even worse for Maneski, though. And I feel once he has that shotgun up, things, I'd say that at that point, maybe they're even. Uh, or even in, in the Illusion's favor. But for the moment, I mean, that's doing okay farm-wise. It's just that with all these deaths, a lot of that farm is being wasted. Uh-oh, Chen, you in trouble. A player's forces are under attack. You in trouble, Chen, and he's going to send back to DK. Okay, no, Chen's not... Oh, no, there we go. He does land the gush, and Puck trying to orb in. He's going to have to drop the drink. Oh, Ravage as well. Bit of a miscommunication there. Chen's actually gone for a Dagon. Maneski. Interesting item pick up, so I have to say. Not too sure about that one, but the Dagon Chen is in action. And uh, Wisp and Rubik at the bottom lane trying to get this tier 1 tower. And it looks like they will get it. No contestion coming from the Sentinel side, from the Thai boys, from the Elysian Esports. Queen of Pain though did want to contest that rune at the bottom river. As the Elysian do have that high ground vision coming from the ward of the Tidehunter, who has been pretty good with these wards. I mean, he's playing the hard support. There's a proper jungle here who's just, I mean, he's largely focusing. I mean, he's getting somewhat team oriented, but he's still trying to get a decent amount of farm on himself. 
up even now. He's in the enemy jungle farming. He's gone from the miners into a mech. Nothing. I mean, fairly standard build. As far as, uh, at least in the Dota 2 scene from what I've seen, and I think in Dota as well. Dota 1 as well, it is, make, it does make sense, the minus just helps you farm so well, and then you can always transition into a one, one or two sort of semi-support items before you go for your big damage item. You can, later on, he can still go for the Ag Scepter, he can still go later on into an MKB, an Orchid, Sheep Stick, those can always come later, the bigger items, you farm so well as a profit that early on. If, I mean, you farm so well that you want that you want to be able to use that farm because you haven't got the best skill stacks to get involved in early team fights apart from your ultimate. But having a mech, having some urns, having some heals does make you more involved in the early game team fight. So I think it is a, a smart decision, almost always, to get even after the match to get a support item or a team item like the like a, like a mech, like a four star, something along those lines. Even Necrobook is if you're going for a push. And so uh, we will see a silence being dropped down. It looks like there was an initiation coming from Puck. Queen of Pain, big ulti. Chen with the heal. Chen needs a mech, or someone needs a mech. Puck taking a lot of damage here. But look at this. Chen should drop. Does drop. And sells the assassin. Can he finish off too many of these heroes? It doesn't look like he will. He's been scouted out. And more thing waving on in. Picks up the kill. Rubik from below. That was a very cocky fade bolt. He hadn't actually been spotted. But now the chase is on. Queen of Pain wants him. Just because of that, and elsewhere we do see Puck picking up the kill. Sorry, not Puck, Morphling picking up the kill. That's Intriso onto RR, the Wisp. Morphling, more kills. He's got his shoddy. Things, problems, issues starting to arise for Maneski Esports. Oh, the shotgun is not going to have enough damage. DK is so damn tanky. But with Queen of Pain, it almost could have an Axie forces a BKB. And now with that, with BKB forced out, they can just go down, they can get this tier 2 mid tower. Or if they really want, they, it looks like they will back off, they haven't got, they've got the Tide Rabbit. No Dream Call for about 10-15 seconds, no Queen of Pain ultimate, but still, I feel it's not a, it's that too bad a scenario for them. A player's forces are under attack. And uh, now we will see Rubik, where is he headed? Not too much, just back towards the middle lane. Feels most comfortable there. The side lane's being a bit more prone to being ganked. And found that mid lane does have a slightly more security, especially once, well, only once it's really been pushed in. When you've still got those tier two towers up, you're not that secure by your, in front of those tier two towers. And Roshan is gonna be the word go. Maneski wanna make this happen. Tether is being used. Every little trick in the book, and uh, this is a DK with a frost dagger. I mean, he is a high level as far as this game is concerned. DK does not often get this level 3 ultimate this quickly into the game. They're gonna drop a penitence, and uh, it looks like the Sentinel team a bit slow to react. Puck is coming on in. Profit faking the TP by the looks of things. And uh, will Puck get there in time once? Oh, whoa. Players' forces are under attack. Orb and uh, not going to get there in time. The age is actually picked up by DK, not the any of, any of the other heroes, like the Ricky, I guess. As uh, top lane, we will see Ricky trying to catch up on farm, trying to get what he can. He's got his Yasha up, 5-600 gold on top of it, but uh, whether he can complete something with this Yasha, Sans and Yasha or Manta, I'll have to win and see, but I think for the most part it may be just in his best interest to start going for the defusal, get the BKB up as fast as possible after that as well. He needs some serious items. And uh, we will see mid lane. Look, just keep these lanes pushed out. I mean, for, for the illusion, right now the key thing is just having this lane control, keeping things pushed out, keeping things fairly stable and solid, and just all around trying to avoid any potential mistakes, which they can do pretty well with lanes being pushed out. They just need to sit grouped up if they if they hear us on a map, and if they are a map, then decide a plan of action. Do you smoke gank one? Do you find a hero who can be f focused down? I mean, how do you decide where? Not so much how, but what do you, what do you decide to do once they, those heroes pop up in the map? I mean, you have to make those educated decisions. As far as decisions go, they just managed to take out who was that? 
I'm losing my screen. They managed to take out Chen. The Dag and Chen just not paying off here. And so we will see Tidehunter going in. Anchor Smash. It looks like all oh, the TP out just in time. And that New Lucian Esports not going to get anything else from that. And that was uh, interesting. A big Tide Ravage being completely wasted. And uh, now we go New Lucian Esports. They re engage the shoddy. Takes out Oa, and the damage is not done. Maneski Jajero taking so much himself. He's got the Aegis, but he's going to go down. He's popped the Lothars. I don't think it's going to help keep, help keep him alive. The Ricky gets scattered out by the Sentry Wards as well. And look at this. Morphing with a replicate of a DK Frost Dragon. Oh, no. DK needs to get out and get out fast. And so we are going to see his own Frost Dragon working against him. Although it doesn't appear to be actually slowing. Now the damage is not done in tree, so the shotgun never comes back up. He just suddenly thinks, oh, let's go be aggressive again. Oh, the adaptive strike takes out Ara, who's been sprouted up, and now they want DK as well. Queen of Pain with a DD still. This is going to be the end of Shigeru. He's trying to be sent back home, but I don't think it's going to be quick enough. Nope, it's not. Morphling, triple kill in tree, so showing why the Illusion Esports value that as such a topic. They took it third. They already had, had the Queen of Pain. They already had a farm heavy lineup but with including that profit they had profit queen of pain and then morphling as their third pick but oh man is it working out well for them i mean this is morphling and uh it's it's been really really sharp and there we go another shotgun this is rubik in all kinds of trouble he's not gonna be sent home in time puck goes moving in and uh the things just starting to surmount as we're gonna see maneski potentially losing their second game in the group stage going two two and with that, they, I think they should still get through, but it's not a guaranteed thing. Uh oh, Morphin taking a lot of damage. He does go down. The Cloud helping out to make sure of that. Ricky isn't done. And oh, he's got a lot of farm at this point in the game with the Yasha ultimate orb. He's gotten, well, he's got enough for the Manta. He's got 1.5k gold on top of that. And now Tidehunter as well going to be the next victim. He does not have Ravage. And down he will go. Three quick kills, double kill for Jay. They want more. They also want to keep this Whisper alive, who is currently sitting on 60, 70 HP. Oh! TP out from Wisp. And oh, Ricky taking a lot of damage. Uh oh, Queen of Pain is in there. Queen of Pain blinks right into a stun. He took out the Wisp, but he then blinked into a stun, trying to chase down the Ricky. Oh no. Disaster, disaster, disaster. But still an okay trade, but not the trade he was looking for. Quick look at the charts. We do see 10, 5, 11 Queen of Pain. Wow. Level 18 with 88 creep kills. Not big on the creeps, but the kills, the assists, the involvement is just spot on. More for 12, 3, and 5, 166 creep kills. He's done it all. Farm, kills, involvement. It has been spot on from him. Tied 137, 313 on profit. Profit with a, a decent game so far. And then finally, there is that puck thing on uh, 62 creep kills. The Scourge team, they've got a couple heroes hovering around the 100 mark with the Rubik and the Ricky, but the DK, 186. It's all about him, man. He's got to be a big step up. As this game goes on, he's going to have the Assault Crest, then he wants to get up. And uh, with that, he'll have more DPS for him as well as his whole team, but still, things are not going all too well for him. I don't think one item like an Assault Crest is going to turn that around. And uh, now we will see Ricky. Scanning through the jungle, I mean, this is, this is really interesting. He's... I mean, he's picked up the Vanguard. He's uh, really just wanting to tank up as much as possible. Um, I mean, he's just feeling that. I mean, BKB is, I guess, going to be a later on option. I mean, especially against Queen of Pain, Puck, Tide Ravage. I mean, he's going to need a BKB, which is why I'm not sure about this Vanguard pickup, because it's going to slow down his other items. Diffusal BKB, I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't have the BKB yet, but it's one of those things where... You'll get it eventually, yeah, and that, that, that's when you time your team fights. It's a timing thing. You wait till you have that key item, and then you fight. 
but that Vanguard isn't really doesn't really fit in that key item category. He's still killable with a Vanguard. I mean, they can afford to be slightly more aggressive and less picky and choosy with their fights. They can take ones which otherwise they wouldn't have without a Vanguard, but still, um, it's going to slow down that BKB drastically. And uh, we're going to see DK at bottom lane, level 19. He's had a strong, strong game as uh, Ricky and Wisp on the forefront looking to be aggressive here. Oh, they found it. They found Prophet. Ricky blinked him from the high ground, and that is going to be the end of Prophet. Wow. Prophet did not expect that one coming. That high ground board on, on the cliff here, helping them out. They're going to get a T2 tower out, out of this, and maybe even more. Oh, wow. And the Illusion Esports teeping back very, very quickly, or as quickly as they can. And I don't know if they're going to be quite here on time but they are i mean well, to defend the tier 3 tower i mean they will eventually but they're going to lose a lot of damage for it morphling needs to get in there as soon as possible and start shotgunning heroes like this wisp wisp is so damn low this is going to be at least a couple kills from morphling there we go shotguns down one and now pops the mantis cell as well we'll see, see if he wants to re-engage here that ricky he got oh ravaged sentries he gets absolutely ko'd rr goes down as well bkbtp the only thing that Jajero can too, and now Chen as well as Oa gonna go down. Rubik, four man wipe. The only hero to survive was the, the BKB DK who just TP'd the hell out of there. And uh, now I imagine Morphin just trying to go go for that push. He saw the opening and he's actually just gonna fight this DK. I'm not sure if that's a, a too bad a decision, especially with DK. I mean, his ult is about to wear off. He pops a low thighs edge. He tries to go in here. He can morph the strength he needs to. And he pops a shotgun, is there any more mana? He's got an ethereal, there we go, he takes out the DK. Team wipe completed, Prophet comes in for a mech, and now he can morph back to agility if he wants. He might want to just, uh, well he wants a TP, if he can replicate someone, he's got a replicate, he can go back to base. Oh, he's got a replicate, he could replicate someone, and then go, go back to base, heal up, get some more agility, there we go, he's going to do it. He's going to do just that, gets the replicate. He's going to get himself some more agility, heal himself up, and then come back in to this team, team fight. Well, he doesn't even have to, they've already got the racks if he really wants, but he's going to come back in with more more and more agility. And uh, Queen of Pain's actually being jumped, but it's just a replicate, as said. They won't overcommit to that. And, oh man, Mineski are in uh, all kinds of trouble right now, I feel. More fling. Gets the tower as well. He's getting more, more and more fun as this game goes on. We'll see some new big iron being picked up soon. He's got an ultimate orb, so something like a Scardi is coming. Oh, shotgun. Down goes Woots. Woots with the dag and Chen. Not paying off. And Wor Morphling waving on him. Takes out another hero. Takes out Oa. And this is going to be the tier 3 tower at mid lane being down. Possibly even the Raxes as well. And Manessi, it looks like they are just out of fuel. There's just nothing left in the tank. They are being outclassed here by Neolution Esports. I mean, this is a strong Thai team, but Manessi Esports definitely in a bit of a slump now and not really fully executing this strategy all that well. It's definitely an experimental thing. I mean, Ricky does not really fit into their normal set of picks. They're up against a team who played it very conventionally and picked really well the Morphling, the Prophet, and I think Manessi were just a bit too risky and went a bit too all out with their picks trying something new. And uh, it's just not working out for them here. We will see the GG call coming from Woots, leaving Manessi at two wins, two losses. We'll have to see whether or not they still advance. I think they should get that third spot position, but I think there's also a possibility of a tie. There's a possibility that two teams get tied in that third place spot, such as, well, I guess, depending on who even gets second, I guess Neil Lucian may be getting the second place spot. I don't know where Skynet's record is, but this group, all over the place, I'm wondering what Neil Lucian's record is and what Skynet's record is, because those are the two teams who could potentially prevent Mineski from advancing, especially considering both of them beat Mineski. So if they end up tied with Mineski, Mineski will, well, Mineski will be in a lot of trouble because they won't go through based on the head-to-head -head record. If it's a two-way tie, if it's a three-way tie, it might be something different. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it pans out. But this is not a good sight for Mineski fans. I feel they may not even advance to the playoff, if, uh, depending on what happened with those two teams. As uh, we are going to have... There we go. The throne goes down. Mineski are defeated, guys. That concludes your last group stage match of the day. 
Mineski Esports going down to Neolution Esports in a fairly exciting and not not exactly one-sided match, but uh, it was it was interesting. Definitely some unusual picks coming out from Mineski, but they are in some bad form as of late. We'll have to see if they can turn it around later on, guys. But that pretty much sums it up from me. I am, of course, GG Net Gods. Oh no, I'm not. Well, I am. I am, of course. I'm always GG Net Gods. I'm GGNet Gods. I'm here. You can now see me. Um, that was fun. That was a little, that was just the group stage. Tomorrow we have the playoffs. We're going to have all your top teams competing it out, brawling for that share of the thirty thousand dollar prize pool, which does which does run over the twelve months. This is just one month of that, so one twelfth of that. We are going to have your three teams from each group advancing into the playoff single elimination bracket. That's all tomorrow, guys. So be sure to tune in tomorrow if you want to find where you can, you want to find the brackets and stuff. Head on over to Ghosty Gamers. This is the place to go. Oh, let me find it. GhostyGamers.net/slash/dota. That's where you want to start. And uh, then you head on over to the coverage hub. This here, Gigabyte Esports Tournament. You click the little banner, and that will take you to our coverage hub with all the news. And then all the group stage results. We've got iZone 4 and 0. Oh. Neolution 3 0 and 1. Neolution will go through. Dreams also went 3 0 and 1. Skynet. Ooh. If Skynet won a second game, they will go through, but I don't think they did because I think this they, they will have lost to Dreams. The only. Ooh. Wait, maybe not. If Skynet beat X game. If Skynet beat X game, Mineski don't go through. That's all Skynet have to do, I'm pretty sure. If Skynet beat X game, that's their second win. And then Mineski are going to be not in the playoffs tomorrow, guys. So potentially Mineski-less playoffs tomorrow. Wow. That is big. That is big. And that is going to be hard for a lot of people to comprehend as the Filipino teams have been doing oh so damn freaking well. But now Mineski face elimination. Anyways, guys, from me, that has been the GEST IDC. Let me just quickly whoop, get back here. Looking good, looking good. Wait, that that's been that's been fun. That was the group stage. Tomorrow we've got the players, which is going to be even better, even more exciting. And uh, if last last month's finals anything to go off, we're going to have an absolutely sensational last couple of matches. The grand finals from last month was something to die for, something that you don't see too often, except here in the GEST IDC. So anyways, guys, thanks everyone for tuning in. Thanks everyone for supporting. I'm, of course, GGNet Gods. Please do follow me on Facebook and Twitter. It means a lot to me. I do love all you guys, all my supporters, all my followers. I do try and let everyone know when I'm streaming, when I'm doing cool stuff, do giveaway stuff, do stuff to give back to you guys as well and make you guys continue to tune in. So thanks everyone for supporting. We'll be back tomorrow. You can check the brackets as I said on Ghostly Gamers. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with your playoffs at, I believe, 12 p.m. Thailand time. So that's 1 p.m. Singapore time, which is GMT plus 8. So that's 1 p.m. for most people in Asia. In Singapore, Philippines, 1 p.m. If you're in Indonesia or Thailand, it is at 12 p.m. So guys, we'll see you all tomorrow. Good night.